What's up YouTube, this is Ebelboy and today I'd like to show you the Snap-on EDC 200. This is a knife I stumbled upon on mere coincidence while browsing the special deals at Knife Center. And it was so ridiculously cheap that I put it in my shopping cart right away. For those of you who never heard of Snap-on, which is probably most Europeans, it is a manufacturer of professional tools who gained a lot of popularity by sponsoring several teams in different American motorsports series. As of now the knife is both out of stock and labeled discontinued, so this seemed to be some old stock remnant. This might also explain why there is only scarce information on the internet about this blade. At least the measurements I can verify myself and they are as follows. The blade length is 90 millimeters, the handle length is 115 millimeters, which makes an overall length of 205 millimeters. The weight comes in at 143 grams. Let's do a size comparison with some popular folding knives, the Kershaw Tremor and the Spyderco Tenacious. As you can see the size of the snap-on is just in between those two other knives. Now let me show you one more knife for comparison, this being the CRKT Drifter. And you probably already see why I brought this knife to the table, it is because of the similarities in design. So if you are a fan of the Drifter design, the EDC 200 might also appeal to you as its larger brother. The biggest eye catcher here is a nice and comfortable double layer two tone G10 handle with the milled out snap on logo revealing the red G10 layer. The G10 texture provides light to medium traction, however, the milled out logo improves grip significantly. The knife is an open pillar design with a liner lock. The locking part of the liner is a little protruding and has some jimping for easy and comfortable operation. The liners are not milled out by the way, but there is a lanyard hole in the back of the handle. The pocket clip is skeletonized, but nonetheless extremely tight. It is mounted for right side tip down carry and cannot be switched. But at least the service phone number is engraved. All parts are held together by torque screws, so no proprietary screw heads like some other Chinese produced knives. The 3mm thick blade has a drop point design with a recurving portion on the cutting edge and a swedge on the spine. It has a partial flat grind and an evenly applied bead blasted finish. There are dual thumb studs for ambidextrous blade deployment and some more jimping on the thumb ramp which offers quite good traction. The blade steel is described as 440 stainless steel, kind of an imprecise labeling as this includes several steel types of different quality grades. Usually when there is nothing else specified it means one of the lower grades was used and in fact the edge doesn't hold up very long but it can be resharpened with relative ease even the recurving part which is usually quite a challenge. So what's my overall conclusion on this knife? I like it very much even with the low quality blade steel that requires quite an amount of sharpening maintenance when the knife is frequently used. The ergonomics are great even though the edges on the liners aren't rounded, they are not as sharp to become an irritation. The overall build quality is quite impressive for a knife in this price range. The blade centering is spot on and the deployment is very smooth due to the bronze washers in the pivot. So all things considered, I do recommend this knife as an everyday beater or for putting it in a toolbox. By the way, although the knife seems to be discontinued, I've seen several new ones available on eBay, so they are somehow still around. 
And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos, and if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to put out videos on a regular basis. Thanks again, and see you around.